It is officially the start of Virgo season. Summer is saying its last words. It's raining more frequently here. The winds are getting cooler. And I don't know what it is, but every year around this time, it incites this urge in me to purge, to let go, to clear out, to start fresh. Did I tell you guys that I'm moving? Yes. My partner and I are moving to a space that will feel a little bit more like ours. And as we are boxing things up and throwing things out, I had to catch myself because if it were up to me and if there was no one watching, I would gladly throw everything away for real. But I realized I'm just like that. Not only am I a minimalist, but I'm not really attached to anything like decorative things or articles of clothing. He's more of a visual creature. So he's into like feng shui and colors and things that make your house feel more like home. I genuinely could care less as long as it looks tasteful. And luckily, I can proudly say that this guy has really good taste. But for me, as long as I have my laptop, my mic and my camera, I'm pretty good. And unfortunately, the videos will have to look different. I'm entering a new space and I'm really excited and a little nervous about the newness that I wanna bring to the channel. So please bear with me. But yeah, you guys, this new move just feels like a full shedding of skin, a shedding of layers. This moment in my life feels like I can actually take pride in the uncertainty and the newness that is coming into my life instead of being driven in fear because of it. And I want to share these feelings of newness and change with you. So that way, when you're at the cusp of change in your life, you'll have the mindset to embrace it like a crisp, cool gust of wind. One that awakens and inspires you. Welcome to the Ron Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I'm your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. I think change is life's greatest reward. I want to invite you to imagine your perfect day. What do you wake up to do? What will you eat? What will you wear? The things you will do, the people that you'll have around you. And ask yourself, if every day was just like this one, would you still feel the same ways about it by day 30? Would it still feel like magic? Or would it slowly become a prison? I think so many of us take for granted the nuance of the new set of 24 hours that we all have in a day and all of the opportunities that it holds. Because of the instant gratification culture that we now have and the luxury of knowledge that is at our disposal, now we want things when and how we want it all the time. But I fear that if this was the case, when would we ever get to experience the miracles of chance or change? Sometimes I believe that Spirits come back to earth because we miss the chaos of the unknown, the ability for things to happen to us, the welcoming of the inevitability of change and just seeing what we can do with it. Because when you can be everything, everywhere, all at once, after a while, you would crave to just be human, to be someone with a dream, a family, maybe even a fear of spiders, to be one in a million again, and to experience a change in year, the change in a season, a newfound awareness, a change in mind. It's like a gift from the Most High, honestly, that nothing is new under the sun, but yet and still there is so much change to be a witness to. And this acceptance and embracing of new things is an attempt to understand God's own heart, I think. Embracing change was very hard for me at first because things being outside of my control as a young girl was very hard for me to grasp. It felt like a punishment or something I needed to just get over because I was either too small or too young or I'm just a woman. I don't have the money. I don't have the support. All of the things that were not necessarily my doing 
but were always the reasons why I could not do something. This led me to be extremely frustrated and extremely proactive in my life to a point where, I guess you can call it, a type A attitude started to form. I never told myself no. Nothing was outside of my reach if I could help it. And this worked for me until until God shows his hand in my life where I'm sharply reminded, oh yeah, I'm doing it all by allowance. I get to have a life where I have an opportunity to inspire change in others, except for the people I wish to inspire the most, like the people in my family or the people that I love. And isn't it funny to go on a journey to healing ultimately so that one day I could use my resources to save my family from themselves just for God to tell me that it's not my job and probably will never happen? And the more that I try, the worse it gets, because those people I claim to love so much and want to save are not mine to heal. They belong to God. And if I truly had trust in a higher power, I wouldn't try so hard to put myself in the middle of everyone's healing to try to put the pieces back together for people that don't necessarily need or want my services. Anything that isn't growing is dying. But growth and change doesn't have to take a specific shape, and we should embrace that. Are you setting expectations for your growth? I don't mean to set a standard for yourself. I think setting standards is a healthy approach. I think you'll know the difference between setting expectations and setting a standards when you can ask yourself, how often are you satisfied with how far you've come? Do you ever sit back and say, I'm proud of where I am? And how long are you able to sit in gratitude before you think about all of the things you want to have or all of the ways you wish you were more established? I like to think about it like this. When a tree is growing a branch, I doubt there is an expectation for how well that branch is forming. When one branch forms shorter or longer, maybe even more narrow than the other, it doesn't mean that all of the growth to get there was in vain. For a long time, I took the self-improvement route in a way to build a better set of mindset practices for myself, but also it was a way of finding control. And what's so amazing about change is that no matter how I tried to understand the concepts and better mental practices to control the way that I was showing up in the world, there were still some things that challenged me. There were still ways I've fallen short. And if I sat here and pretended that one quote, one book, one experience completely changed me for the better, I would be lying because mistakes are an inevitability. And I am here today because I've made a numerous amount of mistakes. But I finally reached a point where I realized that all of those mistakes were just a part of the process. And I should be embracing every single mistake as a building block to get me to where I am instead of something that I should be ashamed of. Some things have taken repeated mistakes, seriously. And in order to express myself in the ways that I've had, in some ways that have helped people, you can hear this today and make the same mistakes tomorrow. But what I realize is we can't rush the things that change us for the better. Maybe it's making the same mistakes from a new level of perception that actually allows you to see your way out of a cycle. It takes just one angle or shifting the perspective on its axis to really see through certain things. And when we get to those points, it should be a celebration, not taking yourself for granted for all of the time it took for you to get there. There's a part of me that is starting to feel or I start to recognize that the self-help and development genre and people that are really interested in that and people that are on the spectrum kind of go hand in hand. If you're like me, you're going to go towards self-help and development to better 
find ways to be, find ways to show up so that you're not making other people feel uncomfortable. Or I had to realize that I was trying so hard to control my masking and I was trying to find better ways to mask through self-help and development and through communication skills. I got so obsessed with communicating clearly that um, I started to even control that and assume that there was going to be this perfect way of communicating that so many people get to understand me and everyone was going to understand me and I was finally going to get the satisfaction of like working myself to a point where I was finally understood and people weren't looking at me like I was weird and I realized that no matter how much work I do I'm always going to be misunderstood and I shouldn't try to dictate how that happens because every time I reach a point where someone has misunderstood me it's giving me an opportunity to accept myself it's giving me an opportunity to truly and fully love myself and know that I am enough so whereas I was always bracing myself for the confrontation of someone misunderstanding me and we, me forcing myself to be understood that now I want to embrace this newness in me where I'm in my 30s and I'm so much more confident in who I am than I was before that I'm not necessarily masking to perform this person easily understood by normal people I now am just okay with being misunderstood being okay with not being perfect and not being this easily understood individual I'm able to see myself more clearly and have an appreciation for all of the things that make me different and make me special I think like that really awakens something in me The art of letting go. As of late, with this new move and with a different perspective at my job and changing the ways that I allow myself to be present there, I had to let go of the version of myself that has a desire to help just aimlessly. And maybe some of my retired people pleasers can relate to this, but when was the moment or should I say what was that last straw? that last messed up scenario you got yourself into where you helped and because you helped it seemed like you were doing more harm than good and this completely halted you it changed your mind it had you assess your approach to make a change for the better so that you aren't feeling jaded about the characteristics that is within you to be helpful to genuinely do good And it breaks my heart sometimes to see the ways that the world changes us or changes the people with good intentions. I slowly saw myself becoming that way, so I decided to work differently. Now that I'm working with energy more than physical time and labor, I realize that before, when I was thinking of work in different ways, I have been going about exerting my energy all wrong and in ways that would keep me feeling enslaved from the constant urge to help. When you're helping aimlessly, there is always going to be someone that's in need, but very seldom will you experience reciprocation and that just doesn't feel good. It's like I was living in a new earth But I wasn't working in the new earth. There was a part of me that still didn't believe in my abilities to be a self-sustaining healer or writer or speaker and to make this work a real priority. So my mind had to split until I started using my voice. And instead of helping people in external ways, the physical ways, being a trainer, being, you know, someone that always helped... I changed my focus to doing internal and more spiritual work and I realized that not only was the work giving me more return, but because it was ultimately to heal and it was all from something started within my own journey, this is all a product of the work that I chose to do on myself, that I'm now able to expand across generations because of the people that I'm able to reach and I think I really enjoy speaking about the new earth where 
jobs have expanded to multidimensional spaces. Our creativity can be used to heal. There is power in those who have the bravery to use their voice. Podcasts are taking the world by storm and they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And this is a reality for many people, but there's a divide. I too remember being on the outside looking in at people who chose to work for expanding in consciousness and they were thriving, not because they had it all, but because I think they existed in such a balance or in just such a freedom that what they felt, the knowledge that they had and the wisdom that they worked to get was not in vain and they used it to help and it has been able to you know, make their life more fruitful. I was once in a place in my life where I thought I would find success in one way and then the world completely turned upside down during COVID and along with it, so many new ways to amplify your voice or to be successful using your voice reached the surface. And I said to myself, maybe let me just go for it. I had nothing to lose and everything to gain, and I'm so happy I did because I now have you guys. I think when it comes to changing the entire course of your life and doing something that no one in your lineage has ever seen, it takes embracing the constant changing of shapes that you must allow yourself to be open to so that you can reach the new levels and the new doors that you should to move forward in your life. When you're embarking on new territory, it's important to be yourself, but it's also important to be formless. So throughout the many stages, you can fit through those many doors. I have this Alice in Wonderland type of imagery where in different parts of the story she had to drink different things and eat different little treats and mushrooms to change shape for whatever her story entailed so that she can fit the size of where she needed to be to make herself more present in where she needed to be at the time and I think when we're utilizing our intuition and and we listen to the pings and we allow it to change us or take us to a new place um it takes a level of courage and freedom and excitement for the unknown i think we should trust in those small nudges that bring us closer to that dark place that new territory the unknown that could potentially be an unoccupied greatness inside of you And, uh, yeah, I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you all so much for watching and making it to this far into the video. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful Virgo season. And I will see you guys in my next one. And in my new apartment. Bye.